All right, everybody. Good evening. Praise God. Uh, looks like about seven more work days till the end of Tabernacles. I love the idea. The end of Tabernacles is Saturday, Sunday. The 18th, 19th. You ready? Is your heart prepared? You ready for a rapture? We're going to be raptured out of here. This is the time. You're looking at the world around you, right? And we want our Jewish brothers and sisters to know that we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We care for you. We wish your eyes had been open to Yeshua being your Messiah. And we love you dearly. We hate your leadership. They are Satanists, and they're trying to lead you astray with that wicked star, that six-pointed star. That is not of heaven. That is not of God. And there is a group, a huge group of Orthodox Jews who burn that Jewish starish flag regularly. Now, their idea is wrong. They say it's up to the Messiah to bring it to them, which is true, but they're going to have somebody who gets ahead of him, the true Messiah, saying, hey, I'm the Messiah, man. And they're going to place their faith in him. And our warning here, our great warning is don't place your faith in the United Nations, Obama, the Pope, the Muslim hierarchy. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. We have about seven working days left. Okay. We got our calendar corrected. We've added that one day to Elul that has never been there. We've always heard Elul 29, Elul 29, Elul 29, but never Elul 30th. And we found out in the Bible code there's an Elul 30th, and there has to be, because Moses walked up the mountain to see God on the first of Elul. That's the, the sixth month on God's calendar. Elul 1, he walked up, and he came back down on Tishri 10, which was yesterday. Okay? Tishri 10 was yesterday, and that was the 40-day. It was a 40-day venture that he took. He took three of those. He went up and got the Word of God audibly. Then he went up. God said, come back, and I'll, I got a special something for you, and it was the Ten Commandments. God had the stones. God had the engraving and gave it to him. Well, then he come down the mountain, and the people were sinning, and they were dancing around a God that wasn't Jehovah. It was that golden calf, and Moses got so mad and so angry because they broke their promise. They, they, it hadn't been that long ago they all promised, oh, we're going to serve God and him alone. And he walks away, and then everybody freaks out. I've experienced that all my pastoral life. When the pastors around, people are like, oh, hey, preacher. How you doing, preacher? Oh, yes. Okay. And then the preacher leaves and it's like, okay, how much sinning can we do? And they don't fear God. They fear man, the preacher, more than they fear God, who's always with them, who's, who's the judge. The preacher, well, our job is, is to represent God and to warn you of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And to bless you, send exhortation your way, encourage you to bring you the Bible. Whatever the Bible says. And at times the Bible is condemning wickedness, evil, idol worship, satanic thoughts, satanic ideas, abortion. God hates those things. And there's many things in the scriptures that say, whoa, 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 cursing, 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 warning, warning, warning. Okay. Then there's a lot of stuff in there that says, man, the Lord's going to bless you. He's going to bless you big. You walk in his ways. You walk in his statutes. You know what the Bible says. No, because the Bible is the heart of God. And to know the heart of God and to love that and to walk in those ways is to walk alongside God, being his friend. And that's what he desires more than anything. That's why he created humanity. So Adam and he could walk together in the cool of the day and just talk about things. And he gave you a beautiful gift called free will. You don't have to walk with him. You can despise him, hate him, curse him, you know, act like he doesn't exist, whatever. You know, there's many Christian atheists. You're no different than an atheist atheist. You guys say you love Jesus, but then in your presentation, in your everyday, you negate him. He's not in your thoughts. And the Bible says... There's a great issue with somebody 
in whom God is not in their thoughts daily. Hey, family, good to be here. Counting the days for our departure. Not too many left, Lila. About 10 days total. Let's see, what is today? Today is the 11th. Uh, is today the, no, 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 this is the 11th day of Tishri. Today is the 8th, right? Today's the 8th. So we got 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 8. 16. Something like that. Uh, people are more concerned with your appearance appearing good and being in the right circles than they are about the heart of God. And that's what it's all about, guys. It's about the heart of God. Do you care about the heart of God? You better. And you better know what he's up to. And he's been so cool. He's, he's not going to do all this destruction and wiping people out and killing, you know, tens of millions at one time each time. As a surprise act, he's, he's warned and he's warned and he's warned. And he's given us biblical history to show how he does it, when he does it. If this happens, he sends a prophet with warning and then the people negate and they won't listen to the Bible preaching and they laugh and they scoff. And then he brings the judgment. Noah, okay, they're sinning. Go build a boat. Noah obeys. The people disobey. God reacts this way, waits for them to get done with the boat, waits for Methuselah to die, and they get in the boat. They bury old Grandpa Methuselah. They get in the boat, and they sit there for seven days. No rain. You know, getting laughed at, getting scoffed at. Oh, he was wrong on his date again. Now he's, He obeyed the Lord and got in the boat. You just wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He'll bring the rain. You just get in the boat. And the boat is Jesus Christ, guys. We want you saved we, because the judgment is here. And it has always come the same way in the past. Over and over and over and over. And finally, when Israel became a nation, there's no such nation as Palestine, guys. Do your due diligence in research. Even the Saudi Arabians are preaching this over there. Saudi, Saudi television is saying there's no such thing as a Palestinian group. This is a lie. And they pull out the historical records and it was the Canaanite land and God gave it to Abraham because their father's Abraham. They just are, are of the fathers. Their father is um, Ishmael and not Isaac. Okay, but fathers, Abraham is still their father. And they recognize these things. And they understand the historical truth. Hey, fam, God bless everyone. God bless, Cush. Amen, guys. We're here. We want you saved. We want you in the boat. You need to believe in Jesus Christ's finished work because the judgment is a coming. And we're going to read about some past judgment, and it happens the same way. Even back there in Deuteronomy, God told how the judgment would be in the end days because the people would refuse him. And what you do is you, you walk outside his blessing. He sets parameters, you know, like a good parent does. Sets parameters, and you can bounce back and forth between those parameters and just be in the blessing. But when you rebel and get outside those parameters and you start living against nature, against the way you were created, against the creator, you're going to find yourself in trouble. You're going to curse yourself. And that's what we're watching all around the world. And Israel has denied Jesus, their creator, their Messiah, for years and years and years and years and years. And when he showed up on the scene... Many believed and most didn't, and they crucified him. Those in power had the power to crucify him, and he came here to be crucified. He came here to die in our place because he didn't want you and me suffering for our own sins that we deserve to suffer for, but they had to be paid. The, the, the punishment had to be taken care of, so he came here to take the punishment for all human beings. Why do people hate him so bad? I think because they got the wrong story. They've listened to Satan's point of view in the story and not listened to love and grace and mercy being poured out and eternity with eternity in mind. Jesus did all this, not, you know, till you, you die and then you're, you're maggot food. This is with eternity in mind. Jesus did all of this for your eternity to be blessed. Your default is hell because of sinfulness, because of what Adam brought to the scene. And because he's our father, we all went, we were all unplugged. He was clothed in light. He was clothed in perfection with the opportunity to sin, free will. And God had a test for him 
God gave them, guys, people always emphasize, why did God give them that test? Why was that tree there? Because God was proving his love. He, he was proving your love. Do you love me? Are, are you really my friend? Will you, will you enjoy the one million trees and just leave my one tree alone? Could you do that for me? That's all the test was. They, they had so much blessing all around them. They had four rivers running through there, hammocks. They had gardens. They had fruit trees. They had beautiful shade. They had the perfect weather at all times. They had everything going for them. And God had a tree out there, and it wasn't a bad tree. It wasn't a poisonous tree. It was just his tree. And he said, can you leave my tree alone and eat all of yours? And they said, no. And in doing that, they sinned, guys. And that made all of us unplugged from God's glory. And God wants to restore the glory. And he will if you'll believe in his death, burial, and resurrection for you. He's taken care of your sin. He's taken care of all of it. And he's burned it all up in himself. He's already been punished, tortured, eternity's worth. Eternity's worth of torture and pain Jesus has already gone through to set you free. Your job to activate this in your life is believe it. Believe the story that you are in desperate need of a Savior and Jesus is him. And then he'll infuse you with that glory again, his perfection. And he'll give you the Holy Spirit as a promise, an earnest down payment that the day he raptures us, looks like November 18, 19 this year. Yep, today's the 8th, so that's 10 days, right? 10, 11 days. Mm-hmm. Be ready, folks. Be ready to be saved. Be saved. Are you ready? So believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And here's what's going to happen to Israel. What you saw happen a month and a day ago when they were attacked, it was because God was is gunning for them. They killed Jesus Christ and they won't believe in him. And their parents put the curse on them when they said, let his blood be on us and our children. God said, okay, that's what we'll do. And they were blinded from the truth, and God turned his heart to the Gentiles. That's us, the Gentile church, the Gentile bride. And God sent a man by the name of the Apostle Paul to preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus, what happened at Calvary, what happened at the cross. God came here to earth. He lived 30 perfect years. Then he began his ministry, continued another three and a half years, walking perfection without sin, because he's God, he's impeccable, he cannot sin. And his whole purpose was to come here to the cross and become sin. Not his own, yours. And God laid on him the iniquity of us all and pinned him to that cross and judged him while our sin was upon him to set us free. Everybody. There's not one person who has been so vile, so mean, so satanic, so you, you name it, murderous, that they can't be saved. Because Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin so we could be saved. And our, our, our plea for you right now is to believe. Our plea to, to the Jews. Guys, we love you. We love the Hebrews. We love the Jews. We're commanded by the Lord to take care of you and to pray for you and to give you the truth and to love you and stand with you. But not your Zionist. They call them secular Zionist. They're not secular. They're satanic Zionist. They hate the Lord Jesus Christ, and they love Satan. All, you, all your leaders, your, your synagogue of Satan, Jesus told us that the synagogue of Satan is who your leadership is. And it was when he was here, and it still is. They are of their father, the devil. They worship Satan. And so Jesus Christ is coming to bring these judgments, these seven years of judgments, to straighten that garbage out. Cush. What I came to the conclusion of Adam and Eve when they didn't trust God in eating the fruit, when Satan said, you will be like God, we are made righteous by believing in God's word in his sacrifice. That's right, the truth versus the lie. The lie condemned them. They believed the lie. And that's what everybody does who doesn't believe the truth. Who doesn't believe the Bible? You believe the lie. That's what happened to the Jews. They believe the lie. And because the Bible says because they didn't have a love for the love of the truth, the lie grew greater 
in their lives, in their soul, in their mind, in their heart. And that's why they love fiction and fantasy and video games and everything other than Jesus the truth. Because the lie continues just to spread in them like leprosy. And leprosy is always equated to sin in the scriptures. And God wants to come and cleanse your leprosy. If you'll believe, his, his shed blood will do that. Okay, Guys, make sure you're saved. Jesus loves you, the Jew first, also to the Gentile. He's died to save everybody. And here's what's going to happen to those that won't believe. Okay, It's coming to America. The night we're raptured, the Russians are going to attack the United States of America, the East Coast, blow it off the map. They might even go after San Francisco. I don't know the story over there. God hates San Fran, and that, that'll be... See, New York, New York being blown to hell, Washington, D.C., that'll empower the Antichrist, Barack Obama. That's his territory. Martha's Vineyard, New York, all that jazz. Washington, D.C., that's where he lived. San Francisco belongs to St. Francis, the Pope. That's why that would be a good night for that to go down as a ritual to empower him as well. Empower the ritual that is Pope Francis, St. Francis, <clears throat> San Francisco, and also the East Coast. So we know the East Coast is going to happen. We know it's going to happen in New York, okay? And here's what's going to happen. It's going to happen here first. Now, it already happened a month and a day ago in Israel. They were attacked, and the reason God allowed it to happen, these are his people. Israel is the wife of God. The church is the bride of Christ Jesus, the son, Okay? Now, that's what this whole thing is. God's going to, Jesus Christ is going to take his bride out and then he's going to bring his hammer fist, his wrath. And he's going to woo his wife back. Two thirds of the Jewish population will die and be destroyed. One third is going to wake up, realize what have we done? What have we done? They're going to humble themselves and they're going to believe. At the three and a half year mark of the seven, God's going to put them in hiding and protect them where they are. Because that's his bride, his wife. And in the meantime, he's going to start bringing the hammer fist to the rest of the world. And he's going to pound and ground this place. Gary says, since we're saved by grace in all dispensations, why do people say the age of grace is about to end? Right. The age of the, the, they mean the church age is about to end and the time of the Holy Spirit indwelling that believer. The Holy Spirit never dwelt a believer. You know, uh, was it Drew asked last night about David praying, take not thy Holy Spirit from me? Remember, Saul had the Holy Spirit come upon him and he prophesied. But in those days, the Holy Spirit came up on people. He didn't indwell people. And when David was praying, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me, he was saying, I don't want to be living in sin because your Holy Spirit will not dwell with a man in sin. You, you and I, the Holy Spirit never leaves us nor forsakes us. But in the Old Testament, the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit didn't come upon everybody. He came upon Samson. He came upon Saul. He came upon David. He came upon Samuel. There were certain men at certain times, Elijah, Elisha, but not all of Israel. Okay? It's a whole different paradigm, a whole different dispensation. And you and I don't have to shed animal blood to be saved. They did. It was a requirement because they were looking to an innocent one who would shed his blood and they had to be covered with his pelt. Well, that's what happened to Adam. Adam tried to cover himself with fig leaves and God said, nope, we need to shed some blood and we're going to cover you with the pelt of an animal. That was representation of Jesus being the innocent one, the innocent lamb, his blood shed, and then us being covered. So the, the whole paradigm is different. The Holy Spirit didn't indwell everybody who believed in the Old Testament. He indwells every believer here since Jesus Christ died. Okay? We are indwelled. We are a special people. That, that's why there's going to be so much judgment. The greater judgment begins in the house of God. Because we have the Holy Spirit, and God will never take the Holy Spirit from us. We have all the promises. We have the completed Bible. They didn't. David didn't have the completed Bible. He had Moses all the way to Psalms and didn't have all the Psalms because some of those, the kings of Hezekiah, the men of Hezekiah copied out. Amen? Uh, I hope that helps the, the answer there, brother. Only, only chosen men of God had the Holy Spirit upon them in the Old Testament, but they were all saved by grace. And they all did the act from Abraham on. 
Abraham was committing sacrifice. He was doing sacrifice before Moses come along and had it written out in the law by grace. He believed by faith. It was encountered to him for righteousness, but he didn't have the Holy Spirit. It was just in the record books, the accounting books. Okay, he believes he's righteous. But not everybody had the Holy Spirit. Only chosen men had, had the power of the Holy Spirit upon them, and that's what David was praying. See, David, I mean, you got, you got to know that all the, the Bible writers had the Holy Spirit on them, giving them word for word what the Bible said. And David was a man of like passions as we are, just like Elijah, but he had the power of God on him, and he didn't want the Holy Spirit to be removed from him. He sinned terribly. He sinned terribly on several different occasions, guys, just like us, okay? He, you know, lusted after Bathsheba. He had sex with Bathsheba. He murdered her husband. He tried to hide it and, and cover it up just like Achan did. When Joshua went into Babylon and they were told not to take anything from Babylon because all that booty, all that gold, silver, the animals, all that belonged to God. Well, that little fellow named Achan, he went and got a little bit for himself. He, he God won't need these. And he saw, he coveted, he desired, he took it, and he hid it. That's the way we all sin. You see, you covet, you take, you hide. And David did the same thing. And there is one year period from 2 Samuel 11, the last verse, to 2 Samuel 12, verse 1. A whole year period of hiding. That's when he watered his couch with tears, and that's when he was becoming emaciated and his digestion quit on him because he was so sickly because he was away from God and the Holy Spirit had departed from him. And then when the preacher came along and pointed his finger in his face, said, you're the man, buddy. You're the wicked one here. This is your responsibility. You've done this to Israel. Boom. He confessed and he got himself cleaned up. The baby died and all that jazz. And he got back to serving the Lord like he was supposed to. The truth was out there. The confession was real. And he humbled himself in the sight of the Lord. And man, the key to humbling yourself in the sight of the Lord is humbling yourself in the sight of men too, guys. Okay? We humble ourselves. So that's, that's the big difference. And, and right now, when we get raptured, not another soul will ever be filled with the Holy Spirit inside them. Okay? They're going to have to listen to the light candles, the, the candlesticks preaching the light. They're going to have to listen to the words of light, the words of truth, the words of revelation. They're going to have to really dig into that 22, okay? And you and I right now are in that 22, the 22nd year after the towers come down. That was God's warning sign to us, guys. You got that, the revelations are coming. Get your revelation right. Get your light right for the next 22 years. And here we are at the end of all that. We have surpassed it. We are in the 23rd year now. So, Amen. Gary says, yes, thank you. Amen, bro. Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, why don't we read uh, another passage about what God does and how he works? Amen. Ezekiel 7. Ezekiel 7. We've got a lot of Bible reading to do. Let's do it. I want you to follow along and listen because this is what's happening in Israel. Israel has sinned. They have hated their Savior. They crucified him and killed him, and they've never repented of it. Now, there are Few Jewish believers who have heard of Jesus Christ and they read the book of Matthew. And they're like, what? This isn't what my rabbi said. This ain't what my mama taught. This ain't what they taught me in rabbi school. And when they read the Bible for themselves, they find out the truth that Jesus loves them. He's a Jew. He's not a Christian. He cares for him. He died for him. He came to die for him in their place. They know the story of the Old Testament. They know about Adam and Eve. They know about the failures of David and all that. And they now learn the one who corrected all the failures. And he took all the failures upon himself, all the sin upon himself, all the guilt upon himself. And God judged him in our place. Every human, if you'll believe that. Please believe that. I've been following hard after the rapture now for 22 months. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God, he's got all those numbers set aside for you. Look, why don't we read Ezekiel 7? 7 and 8, guys. A lot of Bible reading here. And follow along and listen closely. This is what's going on in Israel and America. It happened a little bit in Israel. And it's been terrible. You know, everything they're doing over there in Gaza, blowing up, killing people, you know. The little babies, I don't care if you're, you know, Arab, if you're of Ishmael or Isaac, you don't kill babies, okay? And both sides are killing babies. 
God's sick of it. God is not the God of war. God didn't, God didn't create war. God's a God of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And because people won't have him, they don't care about him. They want what you got. So they're going to kill you to get what you got. So Jesus Christ is coming back to correct all that, okay? And he is the Prince of Peace, and he's going to bring peace. A 1,000-year millennial reign of peace. He's going to show man how to do it and that it can be done. All right, Ezekiel 7.1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me. Okay, so then you're cool with Ezekiel's book being called Ezekiel, right? Everybody good with that? Amen. It's not called God... The, the, book, the book, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. God says, this is the word I gave Ezekiel. We're going to call it Ezekiel. That's what sets him apart from Daniel. Because I gave Daniel a word, God says. And the word of the Lord came unto Daniel, and he sent angels to Daniel. Okay? What are we getting at? The book of Sean Mitchell is the book of Sean Mitchell. God gave him the word. And you better become familiar with it. Okay? Rick says, Ohio just voted to kill babies. They just voted to kill themselves. All right, here we go. Ezekiel 7, 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, Ezekiel, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end, E-N-D, an end is come upon the four corners of the land. God says, I'm coming to kill everybody there. I'm going to judge everybody in that land. Now remember, half of the Jews at this time, in this day and age, live in America. So this includes us. It happened a little bit on a smaller scale in Israel a month and a day ago. It's going to happen humongously here in the United States the night of the rapture. We're talking tens of million, if not a hundred million, dead immediately. And those who don't go to heaven that night will go to hell that night. One or the other. There's no middle ground. There's no purgatory. There's no la-la land. There's no maggot food, you know, dirt nap. Heaven or hell? The end has come upon the land, and I'll send my anger upon you, God says, and I will judge you according to your ways. That's how God judges. He's, he doesn't overblow it and, and oh, the, the crime, the, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. It's just, no. God says, I'm coming, and you're going to get what you deserve, man. You're, you're, you've been deserving this for a long time, and my patience and my mercies kept it from happening. No more, pal, because God has an appointment. He has a timeline. It's been 6,000 years, 5,993 years. You've had that long to get it right, folks, and you're right here with all the information age and at your fingertips, and you choose to listen to fantasy and watch video games and curse God, listen to music that just hates God. You don't deserve this wrath, this fury that's coming your way. Yes, you do. And we'll be in heaven rejoicing over it because God only does good. Whatever he does is perfect, and we're going to clap at everything he does. Why don't you be saved today? I'm going to judge you according to your ways and recompense upon you all your own abominations. I'm going to pour them out on your head like hot coals. Verse 4, and mine eyes shall not spare you. Oh, you're going to cry to him. He says, when this happens, w when you've passed the door, when you've passed the line and the door has closed, the rapture has happened, and you chose to land yourself in the snare, the trap of the devil, and your own wicked heart, your own wicked flesh, God says, I am going to laugh my tail off when your fear comes. I'm going to mock you when you're terrified. I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. And this is coming. And you're going to beg, please, Lord, have mercy. And he's going to be laughing at you when he's coming with another hammer fist on you, a blow of death. Because you brought this upon yourself. It's according to your abominations he's doing this. Not the fact that he's just this mean old God. The story's been changed, guys. You go to movies and you love Thor and you love Osiris and you love all these other gods that are God's enemies all the way through the Bible, and you think they're fictitious because you don't know your Bible. God hates these gods. He's going to settle a score with them. Matter of fact, he's going to let them back. He's going to bring all those gods back here to be your judgment. You loved them at the theater. They hate you in real life. They're going to tear you apart. They're going to rape you, men and women. They're going to tear you apart, ravish you, make you worthless, give you diseases, man. 
Bible says so. It's because you deserve it. Ain't none of us deserve heaven. None of us. But we believed and God made us deserving. He made us holy. He declared it. Please be declared righteous today and don't continue in your sin and your abominations because the judgment is coming. Verse 4, my eye, God says, I'm not going to spare you, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense your ways upon you and your abomination shall be in the midst of you and you shall know at that time that I am God and you're going to quit laughing at me and making fun of me. You're going to know who God is and who he ain't and it ain't you, pal. You're a little pipsqueak weasel. Those little guys in the end zone make a touchdown. They look at the crowd like, I'm the, I'm the man. You wouldn't have been the man if the quarterback didn't throw you the ball. And he wouldn't have been man if the center didn't hike the ball. And he wouldn't have been able to do what he did unless that little kid come out there with a towel and wiped all the sweat off the ball. Everybody forgets it's a team effort. It's about me, 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 me. Look at me. And all that is stupid. Verse 5, we are in Ezekiel 7, 5. Thus says the Lord God, an evil and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come, the end is come. It watcheth for you. Behold, it is come. We're here, guys. The reason we're reading this tonight is because the end has come. The end has come, the end has come. How many times has God said this already? If this happened back in Ezekiel's day with Babylon, and now that was a template for this. That was a regional Babylon. This is worldwide mystery Babylon. This is coming to a town near you. I encourage you to be saved, be caught up to the wonderful city, the celestial city of God, and forget all these towns here. Verse 7, Ezekiel 7, 7. The morning is come unto you, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now I will shortly pour out my fury. This is God talking. I'm going to pour my fury out upon you and accomplish my anger upon you. And I will judge you according to your ways and will recompense you for all your abominations. Why is God repeating this? Because he wants you to know this is your fault, pal. He already did everything to remove your guilt from you, your sin, your iniquity. He's done it all and you still laughed and you still ain't got time for Jesus. You still ain't got time for righteousness. You still hate his plan that was going to save you from this misery. And now God's going to show you your misery is coming because of you, your abominations, your sin, your evil, your laughter, your rebuke, your refusal to believe God and his wonderful plan for you, you could have been saved from by simply, you know, believing it. Humbling yourself and believing it. Verse 9. God says, My eye will not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense you according to your ways. How many times is he going to say that? And your abominations that are in the middle of you, and you shall know that I am the Lord that is smiting you. I'm the one bringing the death blows. Behold the day, behold it comes, the morning is gone forth, the rod has blossomed, pride has budded. God says, I was so merciful to you for so long and I didn't bring the punishment upon you early. I gave you plenty of time to turn. I give you plenty of time to finally listen to the preachers who were preaching and quit scoffing them and quit unbelieving, but you wouldn't. And now this tree limb has budded and it's bringing forth this wicked pride and God hates pride. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. America's proud. We're in the streets waving our proud, prideful sin flags. And God's coming with you. He's coming at you with his anger, his fury, his rage because of your abominations. And your abominations have done this to you, pal. According to your abominations that are in the middle of you, and you shall know that I am the Lord that smites, crushing you. Behold the day, we're in Ezekiel 7.10. Behold the day, behold it is come. The morning has gone forth. That's M-O-R-N, the, the day. The morning has gone forth. And the rod had blossomed, pride had budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. Because you let it, you, you cultivated this wickedness in your life. And now it's cultivated all the way up into producing fruit. And this fruit is bringing forth violence. It's man's violence. Hamas, ISIS, 
Man's violence. This is what has brought forth when you reject Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's come forth. None of them shall remain, nor their multitude, nor of any one of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. Ain't nobody going to care that you're dying. Ain't nobody going to care that you're miserable. Ain't nobody going to care that you're starving to death and freezing to death. Has everybody seen the trailer for the new Ghostbusters movie? Frozen Empire. What? Yeah. For the first time ever in New York City, people are freezing to death in July. You know, the seventh month, Tishery, that we're in right now? Know the story when you see it. Know God's side and what they're calling fiction. Oh, that's a cool movie. You're saying, oh, no, that's Bible and that's now. When they say July, we say Tishery. Now is Tishri, the seventh month on God's calendar, and his judgment is coming. The rapture for the believers. Joy, bliss, wonderment, awesomeness, rewards, blessings, eternal estates given to us, titles, medals, crowns. And it's going to be just the opposite on earth. And God ain't going to care, and neither is anybody else around you. Everybody around the world is going to be glad that you are miserable, America, because you have been such a retard to them. They're going to love. They're going to be applauding your demise. And boy, if you read Deuteronomy 28 with us last night, it's quite the demise. Misery on top of misery on top of misery if you don't die immediately. At day, you'll wish it was morning. At morning, you'll wish it was night. Or, or yeah, day, you'll wish it was night. Night, you'll wish it was morning. And there's not going to be any wailing for them. Nobody's going to be sorrowful for you. They're going to be laughing. Verse 12. The time has come. The day draws near. Let not the buyer rejoice nor the seller mourn. For wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold. Although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof. Which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in, in the iniquity of his life. Uh, everything's going to be going great Saturday. Saturday was an awesome day. We bought, we sold, we did our football games, man. I was, I made a ton of money out there in the parking lot selling my posters and whatever, or my, you know, store, storefront down there. And we just did the money thing all day long. And the next day you ain't going to have nothing to go to. Cause the electricity will have gone out. Did you hear about Australia last night? Yesterday? They lost their power. They lost access to their internet, lost access to their banking. Just. Unplugged. That's what's going to happen here. One day you're going to be selling and doing great. Next day. <sighs> destruction. If you live through it, if you live on the East Coast, you're probably dead. If you ain't saved. We're encouraging you. We're inviting you to be saved and believe. I don't know how far down that coast it'll hours. happen, but it's coming down that coast and it will happen. It will definitely take place in Nova Scotia, Canada, and New York City, down to New York City. And New York City will be totally obliterated, not one survivor. All the sewage will be washed up the next days. Everything that can float will be floating on top of New York City, including dead floating bodies. This ain't gonna be a good time. And it's because of you, man. You did this to you. It wasn't God who did it. God came here to stop it from happening for all humanity. You better believe today. You better hear the preacher. You better hear the voice of God. And you better humble yourself to the voice of God and believe that this is happening. You see it around you, right? Blind man can see what's going on. Retards won't. Stupid men won't. Fools won't see what's going on around them. I'm encouraging you not to be a fool and pray for wisdom. Lord, if this is real, what this preacher is preaching, have me believe it on this side. Please. I want to know the truth. I'm tired of fantasy. I'm tired of fiction. I'm tired of all the lies. I'm tired of everything. I want truth. God will bring you truth, and that's what we're bringing tonight. We bring it every night. It's the Word of God. 
The time has come, the time draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon the whole multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive, for the vision of the touching of the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. What he did yesterday and all his stories, oh man, I, I had all these women, I had all these babes, I had all this money. Those stories are going to be a joke come tomorrow morning when these judgments hit. Verse 14, they have blown the trumpet even to make everybody ready, but none's going to battle. For my wrath is upon the whole multitude thereof. You're not going to be able to defend yourself. And in the Bible, they would blow the trumpets. There was different sound for the trumpets. Time to rejoice, a time to assemble. Guys, we got a, we got a meeting. We want everybody to assemble. And there were certain sounds. You had to learn the sounds of the trumpeteer. And sometimes they were emergency for war. That was get yourself over here with your weapons and let's get ready to defend and fight. And God says, when you hear the trumpets and, and see, his voice is that trumpet. His voice is the shofar. Come up hither. And all the believers are going to be caught up to safety. And when you hear the trumpet thereof, you're not going to be able to defend yourself. God's coming to kill you and to smite you because of your wickedness, your iniquity, your abominations. This is on you, dude. Don't put this on God any longer. He, he came here to take your bullet for you already. And you've refused and laughed and mocked his sacrifice. You deserve what's coming to you. We're going to encourage you to believe and take that what you don't deserve. Mercy is when God doesn't give you what you do deserve. Every one of us deserves hell. Every one of us deserves this judgment. His, his fury, his anger, his wrath because of our own abominations. But Jesus in his mercy took it for us to free us from it. Will you please believe and save yourself and your family from this horror that's coming to America and the rest of the world over a seven-year process? Please be saved. This wrath is coming to the whole multitude thereof. Verse 15, we're in Ezekiel 7, 15. The sword is without. They're coming your way. They've not quite made it to you yet, but they're coming and the pestilence and the famine within. And he that's in the field was, will die by the sword. He that's in the city, famine and pestilence is going to take him. All the food supply will have stopped. On long distance with young son in Mexico till now, looking forward to replay. Great. Excellent. Glad to have you with us, Kim. Gary, a prepper told me today he puts his Bible in his pocket behind his gun. Fools. They're so stupid. They're so stupid. God and country. When you hear a guy saying that, you know that he has never read Ezekiel. Because God hates this country. We are Babylon. Jeremiah 50 and 51. That's us. This Ezekiel passage, that's us. It's, it's the whole world, but it starts with us. We're the head of Babylon. And God always has a record of coming in and chopping the head off. Then he says, I'm going to gut you. For the next seven years, I'll gut you. I'll gut this reptile, this dragon, this monster. And the heart of it all is Jerusalem. That's the last organ he's going to rip out when he comes to Jerusalem to defend his wife. He's going to kill everybody who's not his wife, everybody who's not saved, everybody who's still proud, and their, their branches have budded and produced fruits of wickedness and iniquity and abominations. He's coming to kill all you, man. Because he's a, quite the fruit gatherer. He doesn't miss one. Verse 16, we are in Ezekiel seven sixteen. But they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, everyone for his iniquity. Everybody who escapes the first night is going to be going... They're going to be mourning. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. What have we done? What have we done? They're not going to be all proud and arrogant like they were yesterday. They're going to be so humbled and broken. They're doves of the valley, but they've crawled up to the mountains for some kind of safety above the water level. And they're miserable. And it doesn't get better. 
It gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And you were warned, this ain't some drama you're going to see. You're going to see that what we preachers preach, the preachers of righteousness preach the truth. And Joel Osteen's going to be one of these. If he don't die the first night, he'll be going like a dove. Lord, help me. Please save me. And God's going to laugh at him. Hey, Joel, your hair's messed up there a little bit, buddy. Where's your suit? Laugh at your calamity. He's going to mock when your terror comes. You ain't going to shoot your way out of God's judgment. Amen, buddy. Your weapons will be washed away, man. Amen. Verse 17. Oh, everybody's going to, verse 16. Everybody's going to be mourning everyone for his own iniquity. What have I done to me? What have I done to my family? What kind of stupid choices did I make? Why did I laugh at God? Why did I laugh at Jesus? Why did I laugh at his preachers? Why did I make fun of Sean Mitchell and Johnny Boy Watkins? Why did I do that? Verse 17, all hands are going to be so weak and feeble and all knees are going to be weak as water, going to lose their strength, lose their power. Verse 18, if they also gird themselves with sackcloth and horror shall cover them and shame shall be upon their faces and baldness upon their heads. Going to get the scabies, going to get lice. Going to get that which you need to shave your head for. The pestilence? To get them out of your hair. Oh, get these kids out of my hair. Well, your kids will be out of your hair. They'll be in heaven. It's the pestilence you got to worry about. The scabies. The lice. Verse 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold. I made me a bunch of money yesterday and ain't going to do you no good today because you can't eat gold, dude. No food, no nothing. All been washed away. Did you guys hear that the federal government, the United States Fed, purchased a ton of um, survival food and had it shipped? A, a ton. I'm talking a buttload, boatloads shipped to New York City and New Jersey so they can all be destroyed in the targeted area so nobody else can eat them. They purchase it all up with your tax money so you can't purchase it for yourself. That was just this week. Jersey and New York, all this food being shipped right there so it can be destroyed right there. What percentage of the world population makes it through the millennial reign ballpark? We don't know. Probably one in every ten. Probably a tenth. That's what happens when Jerusalem is destroyed. One of every tenth makes it through. Yeah. One half of a, per uh, of a percent. That sounds good, too. Most everybody will die. There will be about six million Jews who live through it. And they will be repopulating in that three and a half years in hiding. And bringing forth children. They will have been populating... The first three and a half years, and that's why God gives the warning. When you see Jerusalem surrounded and you see Obama go into the temple to declare himself to be God, it's time for you to run. And woe unto you that give suck in those days, that are pregnant with children and give suck. Your journey is going to be tough. They're going to be having babies again after the rapture. Diabolical. Obama is not stupid in his kill schemes. That's all he thinks about day and night. He sits on his bed thinking of this iniquity, the Bible says. And God hates him, the Bible says. He hates all of those who sit on their beds and plan iniquity. And how can I steal that woman's vineyard from her? And how can I steal that man's land? And that's all he's thinking about. More for me, 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 me. John Paul Getty was asked. He was the first billionaire on planet Earth, an oil baron. In an interview that he was asked, how much, sir, is enough? And his answer was, just a little bit more. And that's the, the, the heart of the wicked, wicked man. Can't be satisfied with such things as he has. He's got to have a little bit more in it. And if it's going to come from somewhere, it's got to be yours that he gets. God hates this with a passion. We are in Ezekiel 7. Their knees are weak, verse 17, verse 18. Okay, this is kind of neat. This is chapter 7, as in Tishri. 
and this is the 18th day of the 11th month, which is the ninth month, which is the seventh month. 11 is November, which means nine. The word November means nine. And this happens to be God's seventh month. So we got the seventh month at play in verse 18. I don't know what it says. Let's see what it says. And they shall gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be on all the faces, and baldness upon their heads. The 18th into the 19th is when we believe we're going to be raptured and the judgment will fall. Look at 19. And they shall cast all their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath. That verse is pretty notable here in this chapter, guys. 719. 719 is the last great day of the assembly of the Feast of Tabernacles. The day we believe and know we're going to be raptured. The time has come. And their silver and gold is not going to be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. Their gold is not going to satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. They loved gold and hated God. They loved silver and hated Jesus. The Bible says that the Bible is tried seven times like silver, and it's better than silver. Thy words were better than food, Job said. I, I loved your words more than my necessary food. Not these people. They loved what their gold and silver could get them, and now it can get them nothing in the day of God's wrath. The day of God's wrath. 719? Hmm, make a note. 720. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in his majesty. That's his television. Look at my big television, my theater. Look at my gods. These are talking about your golds, your ornate gods. Okay? Your, your gods. The beauty of his ornament. That's your god. He set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. That six-pointed star is this and that Buddha statue. This is why God came after him. And somebody tell Amir Safadi this. This is God doing this. This is his fury because of your abominations and you're rejecting his Messiah. You're rejecting God. <laughs> I, I cannot see and understand how blind this idiot is. But I can because he pushes that star around. Oh, Israel's so awesome and romantic and God just loves her. God loves her, but he's going to kill about two-thirds of her. To get her to wake up to love him back. That's what this is about. Israel loving him back. And she's going to say, Yeshua is my Savior. She's going to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And say, yes, he's my Messiah. Yes, I believe. Yes, his death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, faith. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. And then, okay. Get it right, Amir. Get it right, all you secular slash satanic Zionist. God ain't into any of this. John Hagee, you're an abomination, bro, and you better come to know this. Verse 20. As for their beautiful little gods, their theater systems, and their awesome houses, and their boat, and their cars, and their vehicles, and their side-by-sides, and the list goes on, all the beauty of all this stuff... God's going to crush it and destroy it, burn it up in one night. Come morning, you ain't going to have nothing but dead bodies laying around you, man. If you survive, we're encouraging you to be saved tonight. The wrath of God is on the way because of you. You're the problem. Why don't you let Jesus become the sacrifice for your sins? God has already poured out his rage on Jesus because of your sin. Don't let that go to waste. Don't let that go to waste, guys. Middle of verse 20. They have made images of their abominations and their detestable things therein. Therefore have I, God, set it far from them. I've removed them from their gods, their television set. They will never see it anymore. Their hot rod, that thing's gone and destroyed too. One EMP did that thing in. Verse 21, 
and I will give it to the hands of the strangers for a prey. All those people in the Trojan horse. Guys, there are so many splinter cells in the United States of America. They're coming to get your stuff. They're going to come rushing the borders. Just in Minnesota alone. In Dearborn, Michigan alone. The tens of thousands of them ready to cut your throat and take your TV from you. Gut you like a fish and take your car. And call their mommy and daddy and have it all on videotape. Look what I just did to this idiot. This round eye whitey. Look what I just did, mom. Holding your guts in his hand. You guys remember that video about seven, eight years ago? That dude eating the guy's liver? He kills him, guts him, rips his liver out and eats it. Right there on videotape. One of those ISIS guys. That's what they're all going to be doing. That was a warning to you. This is an isolated case here. I'm going to show you this one isolated case because it's coming all over America and all over the world, wherever these guys trod. You know, that red horse. That's these guys. Continuing on. Verse 21, and I'll, I'm going to give it to those guys, the strangers, for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they're going to pollute it. Verse 22, my face will I turn also away from you, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter in and defile it. Now, this is continuing on from America going over to Jerusalem as well. They're going to be lied to. They're going to be thinking that peace is there, and then the peace covenant will be broken and they're going to have trouble on their hands and that's what this is talking about verse 23 oh make a chain tie these dudes down the land is full of bloody crimes and the city is full of violence 24 wherefore i will bring the worst of the heathen and they're going to possess your houses and they're going to make the pomp of the strong to cease and their holy places shall be defiled americans are going to be so humiliated they're going to be worse than the Worst third world country on planet earth. And it will all be televised. God's going to bring all these people in that the Americans made fun of. They can't touch me. That idiot. Uh, the guy that does all the airplanes. Monkey works. He's always every show talking about how great the American military is. We are far superior than the rest of them. You need to read Ezekiel, dude. God's going to humiliate you. While you're over there in a boat, over in the Mediterranean, God's going to send these guys in to rape your wives and daughters and humiliate them on videotape, and you'll be seeing it from a ship. The greatest military. You're going to be brought low in one hour, man. Why don't you wake up and be saved at quit laughing at God? God's going to make all your pomp and circumstance to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Verse 25. Destruction comes, and they'll seek peace, and they ain't going to find it. Mischief shall come upon mischief. Hmm, sounds like Loki. Loki. The spirit of Loki just got released. Everybody's bad day just went from bad to worse to worse to worse every step. Mischief, mischief, mischief. They're going to pick on you while you're down. They're going to trip you while you're hurting. And they're going to laugh and scoff and just make it worse and worse and worse for you till you're the lowest of the low and you'll be on the slave block to be sold and nobody will want to buy you. We learned that last night. Deuteronomy 28. This is coming to a town near you all, America. North America. Westernized world. Israel. Mischief upon mischief. Rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. Where is the preacher? Where is that Sean Mitchell guy at? Where are the good guys? I'm sick of these false prophets. Where, where are the godly guys who actually know the Bible? They're going to be seeking, but the law shall perish from the priest and counsel from the ancients. Verse 27, the king shall mourn. All, all the leaders, the rulership, they're going to be just in mourning as well. The prince shall be clothed with desolation and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled i will do unto them after their way god's reminding you this happened because of you idiot this happened because of you oh fool this happened 
to you because you're, you were sleeping while everybody else was being awake and listening, watching, understanding what they were looking at around them. And you were just planning on making more money tomorrow, chasing the bucks and chasing your vacations and chasing your food industry, videotaping your food that you no longer have access to. So many people are going to sit there and mourn and hate what they did. Even the kings are going to hate it. With desolation, the hands of the people in the land shall be troubled. I will do, this is God talking, I will do unto them after their way and according to their desserts. Oh, the desserts. Look look what we made on Food Network. And look at, and it's always so bigger and over the top than it ought to be. Portions larger than any human being ought to be eating. Overindulgence, overindulgence. And according to your desserts, will I judge you? And you're going to know that I am the Lord. Not you, not your gut, not your belly. So many people have made their bellies their God. Whatever satisfies my belly, God's going to take away your food and nothing will satisfy your belly. And you're going to know that Jesus is God. And he was so loving and kind. That's the problem you had with him. Because the first time he came, he was a merciful, sweet little lamb. And he kept offering himself to you. I did this for you. I did this for you. I, I did it. Please believe. Please believe. Please believe. And you scoffed and you laughed and you made fun. Now you don't know how to handle the lion. Because he's a raging and he's coming with power fists to destroy you, man. China's ground army vastly superior to ours. Russia's nuclear arsenal and weaponry is superior to ours. And that's not to mention our military is built to purposely fail. Yes, because we just love pride and we just love inclusive, inclusivicity, inclusiveness. We're just all a nice, such a people softy snowflake bunch. Sodom and Gomorrah, you remember what happened to them? U.S. military. Supersize me. Amen. Glory to God. Guys, I love you. This is the warning from the preacher. The warning from the prophet. What is a prophet? One who brings God to the people. Tonight, we brought God to the people. We're, we're telling you what his mindset is right now. Soft and sweet and beautiful toward his bride, the believers. And angry, raging, furious. And he's coming at you. And he's going to judge you according to your sin your iniquity, your abominations. When he had already poured his wrath out on Jesus for all of those, and you refused. And somebody's got to suffer for your sins, and you wouldn't allow Jesus to do it, so it's your turn, pal, and you won't escape. Please be saved today. The Jew first and also to the Greek. Jesus is your Messiah, Jew. And he wants to be your bridegroom, Gentile. Please believe and quit scoffing because he's coming in rage and we don't have that much longer for it to happen. Today is the eighth day of November. And this will all go down probably the 18th, 19th, 10, 11 days. Hear what we're saying. Hear what we're saying. We love you. We're crying out because we love you. We're crying out because the door of the ark is still open. Jesus is your safety. Come into him. Believe. Drop your pride. Drop everything that's keeping you from the Lord. Hear what we're saying. Visualize what we're saying as truth. Hate lies. Hate fantasy. Hate fiction. And say, Lord, I want to know your truth. And you've been presented the truth tonight. We just read it word for word. Ezekiel 7. Joe says, any preacher says, God save America. God can still send revival to the U.S. Opposes God to his message. The arrow has left the bow. You don't unfling an arrow. His judgment is on the way, and we're warning you of this. Get in the boat made of wood. The cross is that boat. The cross is your salvation. The cross is the ark. And Jesus dying on that cross as your sin sacrifice. Remember the goats last night? One was killed and one was sent off with our sin. Why don't you let Jesus take care of your sin issue? He already did. Don't let it be revoked. The Bible code says 
Those of you who refuse his gift, he's going to rev revoke that gift and it will no longer be held to your account. Your name will be wiped off the docket and he are, are, your name's there. He died for you, but your name will be removed from the book of life because you didn't believe and it will be as though you never lived. And as soon as you get saved and believe, your name is placed into the Lamb's book of life, double ledger system. Please have your name written down. And there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Let it be thine. Believe today. Believe, believe, believe. We beg you to believe in the finished work, the death, the burial, and resurrection. Believe that Jesus paid the entire the entirety of your eternity in heaven with his own blood. Or don't and have it all revoked. Don't be a fool. We encourage you to be wise. Believe, believe, believe. Let's pray. Lord, we pray for everyone to believe. We pray, pray for sinners to believe and for saints to repent and to believe even harder and to grow and to mature to what you want us to be to quit playing games with you, to quit messing around and, and belittling your holiness and your power and your enormity. Lord, have us see you as you are, high and lifted up in your train filling the temple. You are God. You are King of Kings. Have us see this. Have us humble ourselves below you, below hell, below the cross, and just be humble, meek servants that you've called us to be. Have us see everything from your vantage, through your word, the filter. And I pray for everybody here. I pray for lost and I pray for the saved to hear your voice and do the right thing and believe, 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 believe. Help us all to believe. We pray for Sean. Watch over his health. Keep giving him the eye openers and encouraging his heart through your revelations and through the word that the word came unto Sean Mitchell. And have us be listeners and hearers of that word and doers of that word, Lord. And walk your way, walk your path. I pray for everybody here tonight that you'll bless them and their families. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, amen. Man, I love you guys. Amen, that's wonderful. Self-deception is the worst kind. Amen, amen, amen. I love you guys. By his grace, we'll see you tomorrow night.